So we're going to continue on from where we left uh, in our previous video. Uh, so just as a recap, we talked about the dueling uh, DQN architecture, and we talked about prioritized replay. So now we're going to get into the business end of things, and we are going to talk about the agent uh, and going through the rest of the code. Um, now, before I do that, I did push all my code, and I uh, kind of refactored things so that um, my uh, the replay buffer, which is which is where you, where you get the memory, and also the models uh, are in a GitHub repo, but on its on itself. So what I mean by that is, if you go to this repo, download it, and you you click on say modeling uh, the models.py, I I only have uh, code in here which talks about the Q network, the normal Q network architecture, and the Q network dueling architecture. Okay, so you can. Um, you can download that yourself. Um, okay, so let's carry on. Uh, now I've prepared some slides and uh, let's essentially go through this thing. So um, so now we're gonna be talking about DQN mainly throughout this uh, thing and mainly double uh, DQN because I, I'm gonna assume that you already know what DQN is. So there are four main functions that the agent is going to execute, right? So obviously it's, it's going to initialize. So um, and then we have a function called step. So what step is? It's similar to nminus.step in this, except that what it does is, as you step through the iterations, we're going to start saving uh, the state action reward next state uh, things. Okay. So that's what step does. Uh, the function act is going to take the current state and give out an action that the agent will be taking. And the most important part of this is the learn function. So let me uh, quickly show you what the code looks like. Um, no, no, here we go. Okay, so we have a class called DQN agent. So we got initialize, step, act, update, and learn. Now, for for the uh, remainder of the tutorial, what we're really going to be focusing on is this learn function. All right, uh, let me go this. All right, so what learn does is it takes the historical uh, experiences. So what I mean by experience is, again, the uh, state action reward next state done. And we're going to start training our system. OK, uh, let's go back to the slides before I jump into this. Um, right, and now there are two helper functions called update error and soft update which I will get back to, but just quickly update error. What it does is that it uh, it updates the error for as we train so that um, so that we can use prioritize replay. All right. Okay, so the learning. So just a quick recap of the Q learning algorithm. So what we're doing essentially is that we have our, um, what we're trying to calculate is the expected future rewards. Okay, so the way that we do that is we go the current reward plus gamma times a reward one step ahead, gamma square times uh, two times step, and so on. Okay, so actually I should be saying discounted future rewards. Or in other words, um, this, this line over here can be re replaced by saying y equals rt times gamma times expected future rewards at time t plus one. Okay, so I, I, I didn't quite specify that here but it's at time t plus one. And the expected future reward is what you calculate using your Q function, okay, or your Q model, which at, at time t plus one is the next state for the, uh, the next given action. Now, keep in mind, we don't, like when we're doing the training at least, we don't take the next action. We find what the next action is thanks to Q, all right? So we basically, we take, from the next states, the model is going to output, in our case, seven values, and we're going to take the maximum uh, action, the, the action that gives a maximum Q value. Y, on the other hand, is the estimate of the current state. So the way that you, you take that is the model of the state for the action that we currently took at that step. Okay, so the action over here isn't the maximum thing, it's the action that we act, we actually took at that point in time. And the error that I keep coming back to for prioritized replay is y minus rt 
uh, well, this, this should, there should be two brackets in there. Uh, so let me go back and quickly fix that. So I suppose that should be a minus, okay? So yeah, um, so hopefully that makes sense. Uh, now let's skip to the next one. Now, one thing that, that, we, that I did in this thing is I actually initialized two Q values, right? So one is called Q, Q target, which is going to become the right-hand side of this equation over here. Oh. Okay, so anyway, let me, let me explain that in, in a bit more detail. So we have two things called Q target and a Q local. We're only going to train the parameters in Q local using an optimizer, uh, Adam, uh, Adam Bruce, whatever it is, we, that's what we're going to do. And then what we're going to do is we're going to copy all the weights um, into Q target, but at a slow rate. So what do I mean by that? So the Q target weights will end up becoming something along these lines. So typically, the typical values that you have is 0 0.001 times the Q local weights plus 0 0.999 times Q target weights. So this is what the soft update thing that I talked about right at the beginning. Okay, so this is a help function that does that. Um, and the reason that you do that is because these, these are estimates, right? They're noisy. You want things to move slowly. Um, so it's very much uh, similar to a moving average estimate, okay? So considering that we're doing this thousands and thousands of times, this update, um, it, it turns out that Q target and Q local, the, the weights are very close by. They keep following each other, all right? So um, when we're training it, so coming back to this second equation, the left hand y turns out to be uh, Q local. Uh, this expected future rewards at time t plus one is the Q target. Okay, so you estimate using on the left hand side Q local, on the right hand side Q target. Um, right, so, so that's, uh, I think that's what I've said over here. Double DQN. Okay, so here we go. Uh, so the difference between double DQN and normal DQN is the way that we estimate the next action. Okay, so we know that expected future rewards is the model of the next state and the next action, right? Now, in normal DQN, what we did is we chose the next action that maximized Q target, right? Whereas, whereas in double DQN, we choose the next action that maximized Q local instead, right? And the reason that you do that is because if you keep on taking the maximum of the Q target, you're being very optimistic about the fact that the model is correct already, all right? So, um, so there's no room for error. So, so yeah. So without this hack, the model is too optimistic and keep on keeps on overestimate uh, the value of the next state. Okay, and so it turns out that taking double DQN is is um, is, is a better is a better option. Okay, let's go to the next slide. And I think I think that's all I really had to say about uh, double DQN. Um, yeah, okay, so let's quickly jump to the code so that I can show you how this plays out. All right, so we're just gonna focus on the learn function, which is, which is where uh, everything happens. So we get, uh, we managed to get all the historical data saying the uh, state action uh, pairs, and then we uh, load up our Q local and our Q target. Now, if you're, if you're familiar with PyTorch, you need to zero your, all your gradients. This, this is obviously going to be different uh, how you write this in, in TensorFlow, but just disregard the fact that it's PyTorch for now. I'll, I'll try and I'll do my best to explain it so that it, it's, it's neutral to architecture. So the Y value, remember the Y value from the left-hand side is going to be your Q local of the states um, for, for the actual actions that, 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 was, that was there. Okay, So that is, again, from historical data. Now, if, it, if I want a double DQ end, the next action that I take is the uh, maximum of Q local. Okay, so Q local arg max, that's what I do over here. So my maximum Q value, we, yes, I do take Q target of next state, but the next actions are getting fed in from the previous line. Okay, 
Now, if it was normal DQN, all I do is I go Q target next states, and I simply take the maximum over here. This is, ex this is exactly the same as me doing uh, this over here. So if I, if I replace uh, this line with these two lines, Okay, so this is exactly the same. So all I did was change that local to target over here. Okay, so now I, I, I want everything to be one liner. So I'm gonna go back to that. All right, so my target will become rewards plus gamma times by max Q. You do one minus dunce because if at the next point in time your um, environment finished, there is no more future reward to take, right? So, uh, so that's why this line is over here. Uh, so yeah, so and then you just minimize your loss going like your mean squared error between your y and your target, and then you optimize it. Okay, so and that, and that that's essentially it when it comes to double DQN. Um, and yeah, so just and just quickly with all the other functions that's around it, um, act uh, what it does is takes the current state, uh, figures out what the maximum. Uh, yeah, so where, where does it do that? Um, it takes the maximum action from here. Okay, um, I, I, I think I'm calling the maximum somewhere else. But again, anyway, that's that's what's happening. Step what it does is keeps yes, it keeps on saving into memory all the all the uh, the data, but also every ten. So update every I believe I define it to be ten. Um, so every ten iterations, this is going to start training. All right, and also it updates the error as well. Um, and yeah, so that's that's really all the main the main functions in here that helps us to train the model. Um, and now let's just look at the um, look at the code, the final bit of the code, which is how we step through the agent. Okay, so uh, just a quick note on I guess the hyperparameters that I've used in this particular case. Uh, I have. I run through 100 episodes. The gamma, the discount rate that I was talking about was 0.99. Uh, the noise thing over here is basically saying, like in the beginning, 5% of the time, I'm gonna take a random action, regardless of what my Q network tells me. All right, so that, that helps, that encourages this thing to explore uh, the environment a bit more. Okay, but I keep on decaying that noise. Um, the input the, that I have is, four frames of 95 by 128, okay? And the way that I do that is I have a deck, okay, so remember deck is, is a, a list, but that has the maximum number of things that can you can add in there. Otherwise, it's, this keeps on uh, removing the oldest value, uh, putting in the newest thing. Uh, so I have that deck over here, which is ends up being the input to my DQN network. So what we have is a four by 95 by 128, uh, uh, block that goes into my Q network. Um, over here, I am initializing my agent. So I put in my state size, which is exactly what I just mentioned. Matches size is seven. I want double DQN and I want uh, prioritize replay. Um, yeah, and then all we do is we step through um, the model. Now, initially, uh, right at the beginning, there's no data to tell me what the uh, input should be, right? So in that case, what I do is I send in uh, 95 by 128 by four of zeros into my uh, network, okay? So, and that's what it's using to predict the, um, predict the action over here. Um, after that, like as after, after four iterations, it, 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 has, it has four proper frames, and then it goes from there, all right? Um, yeah, so agent.step, you, I, I'm going to save all the rewards that I get, um, and after after one run through this thing, so I, I say 500 iterations is the maximum amount of time that I uh, let it go in a single episode. I, I didn't want it to go until it was done, just because I wanted this to train in a decent amount of time. Um, so yeah, um, yeah, I save the rewards just to check if if it is training up, and then I decay my noise. Okay. So just to give you an idea of, of how it trains, this is, the, uh, this is the average of the last 20 episodes. So it seems to be somewhat generally increasing. Now, if I did uh, let it run for longer, obviously this would do better, uh, but 
again, like I, I'll let you I'll leave that up to you to train properly. So yeah, and then uh, like I said, the rest of it is I had already showed you about how this ends up playing. Um, yeah, so it, it does, it, it understands it needs to go to the right, it understands it needs to jump over obstacles. Um, yeah, it, it, so it doesn't quite understand that it needs to hit these bricks um, to get more things, but I guess that's because I didn't play train enough. Um, yeah, and that's pretty much the end of the tutorial. So if you have any questions or comments, please let me know. Um, hopefully you understand uh, double DQN, uh, dueling Q networks, and uh, prioritize replay, right? So um, yeah, so these are all, all tricks um, that's used in reinforcement learning. Uh, which makes things a whole lot better than vanilla uh, DQA. So thanks for watching.